Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I've got for you five Node.js interview questions. And I'll give you the standard caveat, which I give in most of these interview question videos, which is that this is a representative sampling, but not exhaustive because typically these subjects are really vast and that's no exception with Node. Node is also a little bit tricky because in my view, it's really a suite of related technologies. It's not kind of one thing like for example, React. So it's a little bit hard to hit all your bases, but I did my best to hit the conceptual side of things and also kind of the more practical implementation side. So with that said, let's go ahead and get into it. So our first question seems pretty basic on the surface and that is what is Node.js? Now you may have used Node, but it can be a little bit tricky to describe what it actually is. And the textbook definition is that Node is an open source server side runtime environment built on Chrome's V8 JavaScript engine. It has features that you would expect in JavaScript for example, being event-driven and non-blocking, and it allows you to build scalable server-side web apps in JavaScript. So that's the textbook definition, but I think our second question will really help us get to the bottom of what Node actually is in a more tangible way. So our second question is, what is a runtime environment? And the textbook definition is that a runtime environment is a software stack that's responsible for installing and running your service's code. But what does all this actually mean? So between these two questions, and so what Node is, for me, is just an environment in which you can run JavaScript outside of the web browser. So if you know anything of the history of JavaScript, you know that it was originally written for the browser and could only run in the browser. And so what Node does is it essentially allows you to write JavaScript that runs outside of the browser environment, and in particular on web servers. So that's what Node is for me, and that's how I would describe it. So that was kind of the more theoretical and conceptual side. So let's go ahead and get into a few more practical questions. So our third question is, what is the difference between rec.params and rec.query? And basically what this question comes down to is the difference between a parameter in a URL and a query or a query string. So let's explain this practically. So let's say we have a URL to see a book, like let's say we're on Goodreads or something. Something. And so we go, you know, goodreads.com slash books slash one, where one is the ID. So in that case, if that parameter is called ID, then rec.params.id would be one. A query string or a query on the other hand is everything after the question mark in a URL. So you may have seen this before where you go to a URL and it has a question mark and maybe some data in there. And so this is a common way of doing a few different things. One example would be sorting. So let's say you're on Amazon and you want things sorted highest to lowest. You could, for example, have a query parameter that says sort equals highest or sort equals lowest. It really could be whatever you want. And in this case, in Node, if you were running a Node backend, you would get access to that through rec.query. So that's a Node question, but it's also kind of a web question in general because you need to know how URLs are constructed. But I think that would be a good one to ask in an interview if you're looking for questions. Okay, on to our next question, which is what is body parser and what does it do? So body parser is an NPM pattern package and it has a fairly essential function that you don't get out of the box with Node and that is it takes the body of a post request and extracts it and turns it into JSON. Now, the reason you need something like this is that typically the body of an HTTP request, in this case, a post request, is going to be encoded as a string. As an aside and kind of a fun fact, all HTTP requests are, are just text. And so there's nothing in particular about it that would mean that it's gonna work in JavaScript. And so we need to do a little bit of work on our side to make sure that we can reference that body in a way that makes sense in JavaScript. So the short answer is that it takes takes a body of a post request and turns it from a string into JSON. All right, on to our fifth question, which is what security mechanisms are available in Node? And so the way I would answer this question and the things I would be looking for is number one, the kind of standard security module in Node.js apps is called Helmet. And Helmet helps to secure specifically Express apps, but Node apps with setting a few headers. So that involves setting headers for things like X-Frame options, which helps mitigate clickjacking, cross-site scripting protection, which helps mitigate against cross-site scripting, XSS protection, which helps protect against XSS attack, and strict transport security, which helps keep your users on HTTPS. So if 
I were asking that in an interview, I would look for at least a couple of those. Okay, that's all I've got for this video. Like I said, it's kind of hard to be exhaustive here. We didn't even really get into actually building web apps, but maybe that'll be a part two. Comment down below and let me know if you'd be interested in that. I also feel the need to mention, I got a few of these questions off of a pretty cool GitHub repo, so I'll link that below. And thanks so much for watching to the end. If you're still here, you'd probably like the rest of my channel, which focuses on software engineering and career development. So consider subscribing. Remember, stay hungry, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next one.